of the types of transformations that can occur. All of these are integrating the principles that I'm talking about. Um, and yes, many of these have been in Sunset and, and have been, you know, um, sort of received acclaim, uh, accolades and whatnot. But the real, the real thing is here is, is all of these gardens are saving um, a ton, a ton of water. And it's just simply by, by, by using designs that um, integrate some of these basic principles of, of water harvesting, water efficient irrigation, and climate appropriate plant material. I've got a number more of these, but um, I think we should take questions now. It, it depends on the size of your landscape. Um, it, depends on who, it depends on a number of things. Uh, it's not, people ask that question an awful lot. I can tell you that um, the original grant program, we used to give out up to $20,000, $20, um, up to 50% of the cost of the grant program. This was one of the original grant programmies. So the cost of transforming their entire yard was up there in that range. But if you look at up to $5,000. Um, and, and so it's, it's a matter of scale. Um, and it's a matter of, of what exactly do you want in your landscape. I think uh, there are a number of sustainable landscape techniques that you could use. Um, as a do-it-yourself? Um, I would hire a professional to install an irrigation system. Believe it or not. You wouldn't do the pavers, for instance, because, I mean, that's, that's like the ideal right here. Our people mentioned the parking, but that's really expensive and a lot of and... Y Yeah, I mean, well, this is, yeah. I mean, it depends on what you want to do. Anytime you get into hardscaping, though, um, it's that's that's where it's going to cost. That's where the the money goes up. But you actually, um, you, when you when you buy plants, um, it's a good idea to buy them smaller. It's always a good idea to buy them smaller. You'll save money that way. It's better to put your money into the soil prep, really, um, and make sure you've got a really healthy environment for your plants to grow in. And then the plants that you do spend the money on. Um, they, they grow up in, a, in an environment that's conducive to their health. They'll grow better and faster, and you won't have to go and replant as much. Actually, not. It's actually the, the, that's the interesting part about it. Is it's that's what the point of the sustainable landscaping is that you can. We live in a, an incredible area in terms of plants um, uh, and the way they grow and the types of plants that we have to choose from that are appropriate to our climate. And there, there is pruning. Okay, there is maintenance, but we're not talking about mowing your lawn every single. Week, you know. Get rid of your lawn. You've reduced your maintenance, you know, a lot right there. But these types of plants do need a pruning once, maybe twice a year. That's not that big a deal. Yeah, that's not that big a deal. Um, they're climate appropriate plants. They're plants that, that belong in this in this area. And so you you really are reducing the amount of maintenance. You're also not out there fiddling around with spray heads. And you know, spray heads get knocked over and um, they get kicked or they start leaking. I mean. That's a whole plumbing maintenance uh, nightmare on its own. So by going to the drip irrigation, by combining all of these elements, you really set yourself up to just be able to go out and enjoy your garden and not it be this chore of constant maintenance. And you're using the natural shape of plants, too. You're not trying to change them into all kinds of different shapes. Mm -hmm. Like with our box hedges, those plants don't normally look that way. If you let them, that's abnormal for them, and that takes a lot of maintenance. But if you let them grow out to their natural shape, then right there you've cut your maintenance down by half. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, blue grama is often interseeded with buffalo grasses, um, but UC Verde buffalo grass is what's being sold. Uh, Armstrong is carrying it now. Um, Florisource carries it. Um, there's a guy named Tom Hawkins down in, uh, down in San Clemente who, who runs Florisource. But you, it's, uh, you have to buy these plugs instead of seed, and you plug it in, and then you cut it, and it grows stones out, and it begins to fill in. UC Verde is, is being used a lot in Santa Monica. There are some installations out here in the valley, I know. Um, the other alternative, the carrots, um, that's a native plant. That's a really good, um, native, that's a lawn alternative. The thing with carrots is it's a little bit uh, toughy. It's a little toughy, so the people are going with the UC Verde because they, they like the, it's not toughy, it's, it's kind of like a grass. You could use yarrow as well, but you would want to use something like a King Edward's yarrow, which only grows to about six inches. Um, that's an alternative. When you have those little parkways and areas like around the house where you don't really need lawn, but you might walk over it, Daimondia might be a good choice for that. You can actually go to our website, sustainablesm.org backslash landscape. If you go to sustainablesm.org backslash landscape, and you look under plant tips, you'll find a, an entire document on lawn alternatives. And that's a good place to get more information. Actually, there's all kinds of information on that website for water, fish, and irrigation, and some of the products I talked about. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, the, the um, permeable um, walkway that you were showing, like with the, the you said you could, you could wheel a, a wheelchair up. Right. What was that? That's called service? Gravel Paid 2. And if you Google that, you can, you can find that. You can find it. We also, on our website, the Garden Garden, all the resources are on the website, too. They have links to where to find it.